And welcome to the Fantasy Flex Week 14 Waiver Podcast presented by Prize Picks. I'm your host, Chris Raymond, joined as always by my dude, Sean Kerner. Sean, what's going on? How's your week? What's up? Uh, my, my week was a mixed bag. We'll see if I, if I can hit both props tonight. I think I end up in the positive. Um, so knock on wood with that. But uh, I think I had a really good week. We haven't talked about it much this year, but the, the fancy pros accuracy contest, I think I'm going to be like top three this week. Oh, like nice. Any player I was off by like five or more against ECR just hit. So I think I had a good week there. Um, but yeah, so looking forward to tonight, like maybe I'll have a break even week, but uh, how about you? I had a pretty good week. Um, I mean, you know, my week started based around the fact that Tom Brady was going to go off. Uh, so like I had him in, you yes. know, all of my cash <laughs> games and uh, my QB one. Um, and uh, yeah, pretty consistent. You know, I've been hammering Deontay Johnson and Keenan Allen in, in DFS every week. Yeah. And so loved multiple touchdowns. Uh, I think I ended up going five and four on bets, um, lost the Broncos at the end on, on Sunday night. But um, yeah, no, pretty good week. Felt like I had a pretty good handle on it, uh, just like you in, in terms of this week. One of the, one of the, I think, better weeks in terms of just feeling like you have a handle on it. Like some oh, of yeah. these last few weeks are just nuts. You have four teams on by in week 14 which is kind of crazy, the Colts, the Dolphins, the Patriots, and then the Philadelphia Eagles. So at quarterback, really, the only guy you're trying to replace, and you already had to do this last week, uh, is Jalen Hurts. So, uh, Sean, who are your top-rated uh, streamer plays waiver ads at quarterback for this week? Well, I, I would just assume he's been added in every single league right now, but uh, apparently he's only rostering 34% of Yahoo Leagues, and that's Taysom Hill. Um, you know, it looks like he's going to play through this finger injury. Uh, but, you know, as we saw last week, his rushing upside alone gives him QB1 upside. So I think um, he could be, you know, we could see him rush 10 plus times again this week, um, still throw for around 200 yards. So he's my QB8 uh, to begin the week. Uh, easy matchup against the Jets. So I love Taysom Hill. Uh, and then the only other option that I consider, you know, low end QB1 is Cam Newton. If you want to trust him after that uh, brutal week 11, um, uh, you know, he, he has an easy matchup this week against the Falcons, but they did just fire offensive coordinator Joe Brady, which was kind of weird since they had all bye week to kind of do that. It was kind of surprising they did that yesterday. Um, so there could be enough turmoil there where maybe Cam Newton has another bad game. But if you want to go for that QB1 upside, certainly you can go with Cam Newton. Other than that, you just have the typical – streaming options every week with uh, Tyler Heineke and Teddy Bridgewater, you know, higher floor kind of guy, but uh, I, I like going for the moon and, you know, Taysom Hill and Cam Newton provide that, that upside I look for. Uh, one other guy I want to mention, uh, what do you think of Jimmy Garoppolo? You know, he's been putting up some numbers here. He's been pretty efficient. Um, they're playing Cincinnati, which kind of sets up as another one of those games similar to the game Cincinnati played against the Chargers where you have, you know, two offenses that can put up points. So it shouldn't be, you know, I know the Niners have been running and Debo's probably out again, but uh, any love for Jimmy G is he still further down your, your uh, streaming board? He's still further down. I, I would probably bump him up into that streamer range if Debo uh, were to return, but he still has Ayuk and George Kittle. So he still has weapons. Um, he made a few really bad turnovers, uh, but I still think he's safe. I don't think Trey Lance, unfortunately, is not going to replace him anytime soon. Um, so typically like, for the first 10 weeks or so, I think I was, you know, projecting Lance for some playing time that's gone away. So I'm at least, you know, projecting Garoppolo for hundred percent of the snaps, but right now he's still on that QB 18 range unless Debo returns this week. Yeah. Uh, Kyle Shanahan has essentially said that the reason he stopped playing Trey Lance was because it messed him up in terms of his play calling. Yeah. Um, he'd rather get in a rhythm and be able to, cause they give you different coverages when you have one or the other in the game. So kind of playing off, what they're doing to Jimmy G early and then being able to call the game. So yeah, I don't think we're seeing Lance anytime soon either. Uh, all right. Uh, let's go to the running back position. We have some, we have Donathan Taylor on by, so that's, that's, <laughs> that's going to be tough for, for people out there. Um, if you have Taylor on your team, that's a, it's a hole you can't replace essentially. Um, Miles <laughs> he, deserves, Gaskin. he deserves some rest though. He's right. Been, uh, yeah. Working overtime. The new Derek, the new Derek Henry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Miles Gaskins on by both Patriots backs uh, and Miles Sanders. So quite a few running backs that you probably used uh, in week 13 are, and, and, you know, for much of the season are going to be out here. So uh, who do we like in terms of top uh, ads at the running back position this week? 
Well, it's it's certainly not as fruitful as last week. That last week was one of the best waiver wire weeks of the season. This week, not so much. Um, right now, like if Dontrell Hilliard is still out there, I would add him. They face the Jaguars. They were on bye last week, so maybe people overlooked, uh, you know, a back like Hilliard. Um, but you know, last uh, last time they played, um, you know, he and Foreman both rushed for over 100 yards in a loss, which is kind of bizarre. But if you look, Hilliard uh, led the two in rush attempts in the first half. He had eight carries to Foreman seven. It wasn't until the game was out of hand. Uh, Foreman had 12 carries to Hilliard's four. So it's like the Titans are treating Hilliard as sort of the, the lead back. So um, even though Jerry McNichols might return this week, I think Hilliard is still, uh, you know, sort of a low end RB two. So I'd, I'd roll the dice on him for this week. Um, if you're looking more long term, if you know, you're not looking for running back this week, uh, just check out, you know, the Eagles running backs, uh, Jordan Howard, Boston Scott, Kenneth Gainwell, who knows who would step up if Miles Sanders is going to miss time. But it looks like Sanders re-injured the same ankle uh, that cost him several games uh, a few uh, weeks ago. So, you know, he might be out for a while or he could be, you know, able to suit up next week. But either way, those three uh, might be worth a stash if you're looking for a week 14 uh, option. Um, and then the other, other guy I think is worth mentioning is Rashad Penny, your favorite running back in football. Um, you know, he led the uh, – or he shared – uh, the lead for touches with 11 uh, with Adrian Peterson last week. So he could, you know, be the workhorse back uh, this week against the Texans, which is a great matchup. So no, I know you don't agree. Nope. But, That's but a you terrible be call. Super desperate. That's a you bad be... call. He, they're not, they hate Rashad. Like the only this reason, is... the only reason he was playing was because Collins was hurt and Adrian Peterson was, had like a few, like two days with the team. Like if, if Collins is out, I guarantee you Adrian Peterson gets like, 75% of the carries this week and, and, and Penny gets like 25. Like they, they just yeah, don't I, like this guy. Like Carol doesn't you, like this guy. He just right. doesn't. And I, I, well, you interrupted my, my final <laughs> sentence, which is going to prove you right as well. It was like, and this is why this is a brutal week for the waiver yeah. at running yeah. back. If we're talking about Rashad Penny, like who else do you have that? <laughs> I mean, more upside? realistically, if Collins is out, I would say Adrian Peterson is still a better ad than Rashad Penny, just because number one, He's, as we saw, he probably gets the goal line work. Number yeah. two, I think his usage only goes up. The fact that he got, he drew Penny to an even split and Penny's been a first round pick who's been on this team for what, three years now? Uh, and, and, and Peterson got the same amount of carries being on his team for like two days coming off his couch. Like put the, put the, put two and two together. Like Penny, yeah. he, if Collins is back, I, I, Penny would likely be a healthy scratch because Homer and Dallas play special teams. So they're not going anywhere. So yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't even add him. Like I, every time this comes up, it's like, people are like, oh, maybe you can have Rashad Penny. I'm like, nope, no, no, just, just don't, just, just don't do it. Yeah, no, this is the week. <laughs> uh, you don't want to be relying on the waiver wire. You want to be relying on those high upside backups. You've been stashing all year, like a Jamal Williams or, you know, um, uh, Javante Williams isn't a backup, but these, these, you know, guys that can see an increase in value when the, the starter goes down, like those are the guys you want to be relying on this time of year, not, adding these like Rashad pennies of the world on the waiver wire. So yeah, but yeah it's a, it's a bad week for running backs on the waiver. wire. I do lie. think if you're listening to this and you happen to listen before the Monday night game, add Matt Breida as a prospect, you know, perspectively um, just because there's a chance he could lead that backfield, but I would say, yeah, Hilliard's my number one. Yeah. Uh, and a guy we haven't mentioned, he's still only 23% owned sexy Rexy Rex Burkhead. Uh, <laughs> he's the leader. And listen, I bet the under on his rushing prop, Last, uh, you know, week 13, if you follow me in the Action Network app, you saw that, that hit. But Seattle, in terms of giving up catches to running backs, I mean, they just give, they give up a ton of production to the, the running back position. Football Outsiders has them allowing the most schedule adjusted receiving yards to running backs entering last week's game. So I, I, I haven't looked at the numbers yet. They haven't been updated, but uh, it's still going to be pretty high. Rex Burkhead. Uh, now you have Davis Mills at quarterback for the Texans. So that takes out some of the scrambles. Uh, he may rely more on, you know, dumping it off. And Burkhead, even with David Johnson back, uh, Burkhead was still weeding the backfield and snaps. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, he's a guy, again, it's desperate times. It's not a, it's not a sexy play, even though it is sexy <laughs> Rexy. Uh, but I think you do. I think you do add him. It's kind of similar to Hilliard, but he actually might get even more usage. I think Hilliard's a better player. I think Hilliard has more upside. Um, but Burkhead yeah. is a, might even have a safer floor because, again, McNichols is coming back. It adds a third variable, whereas Royce Freeman 
has been kind of active in, in that backfield for a few weeks and didn't get touches until Johnson got hurt. So, um, you know, it might still be a two-man backfield in Houston here. So, uh, yeah, I would, I would look at Rex Burkhead. And then, yeah, Adrian Peterson in standard leagues uh, over Rashad Penny for me, absolutely. Like, not even a question. Yeah, uh, standard format for sure. But yeah, no, I, but any for any format. Any but like, format. I, like I don't even know if you want to add him if it's not standard. Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and it, but if David Johnson returns this week, I want nothing to do with this Texans backfield. But if, I mean, if I still think Burkhead. Yeah. I was still take. I I mean, Burkhead was leading the backfield even with Johnson there. I just think I, I, it's not sexy, but against Seattle, I mean, Burkhead could easily get like ten carries for twenty three yards and like <laughs> yeah. and like seven catches for like forty six. You know, like the receiving yeah. work. Yeah, exactly yeah. the receiving work. But if DJ does return, it it eats into that, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, against Seattle, they literally have no other players besides Brandon Cooks. So, like it's, at, I'm it could work. Trust me, it could work. It could work. It could work. <laughs> it's, how about it, oh. Uh, how about the uh, Panthers backs? Forgot to mention them. Uh, where do you have Hubbard and Abdullah ranked right now? Oh, so Hubbard should be uh, an RB2. Abdullah should get more of the pass game work. Yep. So, But I still think he's a dicey flex because it's just all going to be dependent on game script. And this Falcons game is a close game projected projection-wise. You know, you, you're projecting a spread of like two and a half or so. So, I, you know, it could go either way. But I think Chuba is still that lead back. And with McCaffrey out, Chuba is not going to get like only 5% of the pass down snaps. Now, like he might get, you know, 20, 25, 30, yeah. you know, I think Abdullah still gets like beats him on like a two to one ratio when it comes to the pass down snaps, but um, Chuba's upside is 20 carries and, and he's, he's shown he can catch the ball. Like they've given him work in that pass game. So yeah, I do think, um, I think you got to, at Chuba, but he's, he looks like he's owned pretty much he's 76% of, of league. So maybe you have a one in four chance of still landing him. I don't know what your league mates are doing if he's still out there. Uh, but yeah, you know, if he's out there, you add him Abdullah, Absolutely. I would put him above. I mean, I would put Abdullah below everyone we mentioned except Rashad Penny. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I understand your hate for Rashad Penny. Well aware. Um, and then what's going on is, uh, is Michael Carter. He's, is he missing another week? I believe so. Yeah. So Coleman's under 50%. So he's another guy, uh, you know, he's, he's an option as well. Forgot to mention him, but he's in that same kind of boat here. He's, he had, uh, he's had 14 touches and 18 touches the last two weeks. So yeah, I would put him right in that Hilliard range, uh, probably a little bit above Burkhead below Hilliard uh, right in that range. Yeah. So it looks like Carter might return next week. Okay. Yeah. Well, so that it's all dependent on, on Carter returning, obviously. Yeah. All right, uh, let's get to wide receiver. If you're starting Michael Pittman, Jalen Waddle, Jacoby Myers, Devontae Smith, uh, you have bye week to deal with. Also, Adam Thielen, uh, looks like he is going to be done as well. And you have a quick turnaround here, so you got to replace him. Uh, the Vikings are on Thursday night football, but he's not going to be an option there. Uh, Sean, who are you looking at as your top ad for the wide receiver position for week 14? Uh, so not sure how many leagues he's available in, but I'm on Ross St. Brown, uh, a guy that you, myself and Samantha, um, talked up a lot heading into the season. He finally had his breakout game, uh, you know, 10 catches for 86 yards and finally scored a touchdown. Uh, he played a key role in their first win, but, um, you know, he's, he's been a high floor option, especially in PPR formats. Uh, so love adding him, you know, the, the lions are going to typically be in a trailing game script. So that's, that's why he has a high floor. Uh, and Josh Reynolds also had another good game. I, I like him a lot less than Alma and Ralph Brown, but if he's still out there and you're in a deeper league, I still think you should add him. Uh, KJ Osborne, I mean, he's going to have to step up this week and beyond potentially uh, as long as Adam Thielen is out. So, you know, he, he could be more of like a wide receiver four type uh, in deeper leagues. He posted a nice four catch 47 yard game with a touchdown last week uh, once Thielen went out. Uh, and then Russell Gage, I, I just thought he was assumed, I assumed he was rostered in every league. Um, he's still available in 66% of leagues. Uh, go out and add him. He's, he's been a low end wide receiver three, uh, in my rankings for a few weeks now. Um, and he just went off 11 catch 130 yard game. Um, another one of those like really high floor guys, especially in PPR. Uh, so if you need help at wide receiver, certainly go out and add him. And I just want to throw one more guy out there. Your boy, Brashad Perryman, uh, was operating as the number three receiver for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, this week he didn't do much, but that's something to monitor. So um, if he ends up, you know, passing up Tyler Johnson, Scotty Miller, even uh, for that wide receiver three role, he could make some noise. 
Um, so I wouldn't add him quite yet, but definitely monitor that situation. Oh, I would add, I would add Brashad Perriman. Absolutely. He played 40, he ran a route on 47 of the 52 pass snaps for, for the Bucks. And, yeah. and Johnson had seven and Miller had two. And there was no like injury shenanigans that, that I know of. Like, right, this is that, just Perriman he went, he, coming he back. He went for one catch for five yards. So I don't think people are going to be flocking to get him. So if you're savvy and you have room on your bench, I'm just saying stash him, but. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I would kind of consider him the number one ad. I mean, oh, he's, okay. playing, he's playing with Tom Brady. I mean, because like, think about it. It's like, the you know, the Vikings have been criticized for for kind of not getting the ball to their top guys. So it's like, yes, Osborne is a good receiver and like he should be the number one ad. But after that, I mean, it's like, it's still the Lions. We're talking about Reynolds and St. Brown here. I mean, St. Brown took 10, what, 13 weeks to score a touchdown. Reynolds got cut twice. Like, or, you know, it's like, the, the, I would much rather have like one or two weeks of Rashad Perriman than like a, the rest of the season of Lions receivers. Well, it, That's it, just it me. <laughs> yeah, it, it depends what you're going for. If, if you're like a favorite in your matchup and you just want to get seven points from somebody, you play a guy like Amon Ross St. Brown, right? Uh, but if, if you need a big game or you're an underdog and you just want a higher ceiling, Rashad Perryman's your guy. So it's, it kind of depends what you're looking for. So yeah, I agree. I think Perryman's the best ad this week. Um, if you're going for upside, whereas St. Brown, he, or uh, Russell Gage, even Russell. Yeah. Russell well, Gage, Russell Gage. Yeah. He should, he should be, he should be the he's top available one. in 66. He's their number one receiver. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if you just need points any given week, especially, you know, your wide receiver three, wide receiver four slot. Most of the time, you just want to get points from that position. Add those guys, but I'm with you. Perryman has that massive upside uh, where who knows, he could end up, you know, have spiked weeks where he's a top 10 option. And so um, it just depends what you're looking for. And, re- and remember, like Antonio Brown, you never know. Like he's had an ankle injury. Now he's got suspended. Like you he might, might not cut. play another. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, right. Like that's my, that's my kind of my point. And Perriman has been here. He's operated as their number three receiver. Yep before and you know even beyond so um and, and remember the bucks also in a really good position playoff wise they have three losses so uh you know maybe there's some their schedule after the bills next week is so easy it's like panthers twice jets that you might even see like evans or godwin start getting rested a little bit yeah, you know we yeah. saw that down the stretch last year they got a little banged up um so yeah i think there's just a lot of upside to owning perriman is kind of what i'm saying like um yeah not over russell gage obviously but like if it was just over like the two lions receivers who you're who you'd essentially be adding at their highest points uh i'm fine with adding perriman over those guys let's close it out with tight end uh mike gasicki dallas goddard the two guys you've probably been starting that are on bye weeks this week uh who sean are you looking at here at the tight end position late in the year, week 14? I think uh, Tyler Conklin is a no-brainer uh, for this week. He's uh, available in 70% of the leagues, um, and he's my tight end nine to open the week. Obviously, he's going to get a couple more targets uh, with feeling out, but he's he's been a consistent producer um, for a couple of months now, it seems like. So I, I think he's the safest bet. Um, Foster Moreau was pretty disappointing. Uh, huh. last week for people that added him he had one catch for 34 yards which kind of shows his upside but uh his routes run rate was 64 percent. that was about 20 percent under what i was expecting so um it, it's hard to really rate him as a low end uh tight end one again this week so he's more of a you know high upside tight end two unfortunately if waller is even out again so uh, i'm kind of out on moreau now and then we'll have to monitor this this Logan Thomas situation. Um, it looks like he avoided an ACL tear. I'm not sure if he's still uh, expected to miss time, but yeah, assume, probably probably at least this week. Yeah, yeah, at least this week. But uh, you know, we've liked kind of attacking either Ricky Seals Jones or John Bates, uh, but I don't know which one's going to be uh, the starter this week. So this could be a situation to avoid. But it's still worth monitoring because it seems like the football team loves having just like a workhorse tight end. They really haven't split snaps much this year so it's just something to monitor if you're desperate but either way i think conklin if he's out there is the must add for this week yeah it's tough with because that's kind of the situation i'm looking at too is that washington situation i think it would be john bates now because he's the younger guy and he's played yeah. really well they really like him uh and so like Seals jones, jones is is like, yeah. yeah he's hurt and he's more of like a veteran journeyman and i mean i thought i thought he was good enough to play last week and he was still scratched so i don't know i don't know if that was because of the injury or just they decided to go with Bates and, and Thomas, but um, 
yeah, it, it's it's a situation to monitor, but mm-hmm. yeah, be ready to add Bates. Uh, I think I think if Seals Jones came back and he was hurt, I think that would lead to more of a split. But I think if if Bates is kind of yeah, they're saying hey, he's going to be our guy. I think exactly. you'd see that 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 80, 90 percent uh, snap rate that we've been seeing out of these tight ends. Yeah, and another just another guy to just to mention is Austin Hooper and David Joku. Looks like Harrison Bryant um, suffered a high ankle sprain, so he might miss quite a bit of time. So those two, you know, if you're desperate, if you're in like Scott Fishbowl League, uh, Austin Hooper and David Joku uh, deserve a look this week as well. Oh, nightmare, but yeah, no, nah, I hear you. The Bra- <laughs> I mean, the Browns got to get these tight ends involved because it's really That's they all don't they really got. have much besides uh, besides Landry. Jarvis Landry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no love for. Cole Komet, I know he was he had he was kind of like a hot pickup, and then he's just as usual. Cole Komet did Cole Komet? Yeah, things. he's he's in that range. He's tight end fifteen, but again, you know, Jimmy Graham is the touchdown vulture. So yeah, uh, if you like four catches for forty yards, Cole Komet's your guy. But unfortunately, just Jimmy Graham just robs that you know that upside that tight end one upside that he would have if Jimmy Graham weren't there. But yeah, just uh, Cole Komet's a tight end too for me. And uh, what did uh? Did we get a Juwan Johnson? Did Juwan Johnson retake that job? I feel like we have to talk I don't about even... it before we get out of here every week. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Juwan Johnson ran a route on 21 of the 48. So, no, he did not retain that job. <laughs> but even though – oh, he kind of did because Vanette had four catches on just 16 routes. So, uh, yeah, it's, it, that's another situation to avoid. Even against yeah, avoid Nets. it completely. Yeah. Yep. So, yep. Yeah, you don't got Tyler Conklin out there. Sorry, it's probably, probably just <laughs> yeah. fucked this week. That's my advice. Um, all right, let's get out of here. Uh, that's going to do it for the Fantasy Flex Week 14 Waivers Pod presented by Prize Picks. You can find Sean on Twitter at the underscore odds maker. You can find me at Chris Raybon, and you can find us at those same handles in the free award winning Action Network app. Be sure to check out fantasylabs.com for our DFS content tools and models and actionnetwork.com for our fantasy football content rankings and projections. Until next time, let's get this money. 